Okay. There we go. All right. Welcome to another uh, Sunday sync or accountability group or whatever you want to call it. So we were talking before we clicked the record button about John has uh, closed on his ADU and what do you, what do you call it? Not a duplex, but what is it? Just two units on a single property? Uh, it's, a, it's a house with an ADU. House with an ADU. Okay. Or it will be once I get done with about $10,000 worth of work. Ouch. But I didn't pay closing. Oh, how did that work? Um, so interestingly, the, uh, former owner listed the property with a realtor who's not in the area, who also did not put a sign out front. And on top of that, they, uh, didn't list it in the local MLS. So I actually found it and asked my realtor about it because he hadn't seen it pop up. Hey Dennis, I'm going to go ahead and mute you for a second there. There we go. Okay, go ahead, John. Uh, so um, it wasn't listed in the local MLS. It was listed by an out-of-area realtor, and there was no sign in the front yard. So that so means you don't pay close. How does it relate? Walk me down the path. of. Well, if nobody knows it's for sale, unless you're looking specifically on Zillow for it, uh, it's, it's, it's overlooked, shall we say. So we wound up being on the market for like 40, 45 days. And I guess it didn't really get any traction. And for me, because the garage conversion was, had been done, it, they just didn't finish it in the full way. Um, I saw it as a house with an ADU. Everyone else just saw it as a four bedroom, two bath. So you, you, okay. So you found the deal, but then you said you didn't pay closing. Is that because it was off market at that point? And you worked directly with the seller or? Uh oh, it froze up. Oh, there we go. We lost you there for a second, John. Are you back? What's up, Mark? We were listening to John's story about his house in ADU, but I think we lost him. All right, John, I think we lost you. Probably going to have to let me know when you come back. If you come back, just, just jump on in. All right, looks like we got Mark, Herman, Mikey, Dennis, and myself on board. I know uh, Brandon said he'll be here in a little bit. Hey, George. Right. What's that? Hi. Hello. Hello. Who was hey, who was that? This is Dennis. Oh, hey Dennis. How's it going? Do you have any questions or anything you want to talk about? Um, so I have this asset-based lender, and we have a potential to do a section eight. And I'm just curious if if anybody here has experience exploring section eight. Like I know obviously there's the benefits, there's drawbacks. Just wanted to kind of get some clarity of some of the stuff that I need to be looking for. But opportunity to get a Section 8 it is in New Jersey. Um, so it is not a tenant-friendly or a landlord-friendly state. It's a tenant-friendly state. Um, there is questions that I have regarding, like, what kind of properties would qualify, would better qualify for um, a section eight tenant. I know that the ten the tenant has to qualify first, and then I think in some places even the property has to qualify. That's what I just wanted to clarify. It's a lot of clarifications. Anybody here do section eight? I don't. Mark, do you? Yeah, I don't do section eight. I know uh, Dion does, and Matt does as well. But I don't. I don't know anybody if they do here or not. Okay. Well, you might might pop something in the school community and pop out a question there to see what uh, see what kind of response you get. I I know um, Dion responds to at least the ones I put on there on the on his YouTube channel too. Uh, you might ping that question out on the YouTube on Dion's YouTube channel. Yeah, the, this asset-based lender, he's been um, sponsoring a lot of our sub two events, stuff like that. And he he's definitely somebody to know. He has also like 
becoming one of the board members in the local RIA. And he told me, he's like, hey, listen, he's like, because I, I, was, I was trying to take down a sub two in Clarksville, and I, I had everything lined up to take it down. The problem was I didn't have an operator that was in co-living space. So unfortunately, I had to walk away from that one because I looked up in Patsport. There's really not much activity there. And unless you have a connection with the local military base, there's really not much that I could have done as far as the COVID living model. Mm. And my goal right now is to acquire some rentals because I have taxes that I need to offset from 1099. Mm. The, I just wholesale really deals and the regular mostly transaction deals that I've done this year. So, um, with regard to the military base, so there's usually most of the bases I've been, um, I, I go to Luke Air Force Base also, but you can go to the QC office or the front gate basically, and they usually have some so sort of bulletin board there. You can ask them, you can ask the staff, uh, NCO or whoever's on duty, hey, can I put my listing here on this board? Um, now that may or may not get you some traction because the people that are coming in and off base usually might be on post living, but it's at least something, um, a little bit of uh, advertisement, if you will, for free, but they usually have some sort of board there. So you might try that. Yeah, the initial guy that I found, that's what he does. Um, but when we started to really like looking into his past, he wasn't even producing your financials or give us examples of the properties that he does with. So that to me was a red flag. So I was like, yeah. okay, well, if you can't produce anything, like you might as well be me. And I'm sorry to say that, but you don't bring value to the deal. Right. I found the deal. I raised the capital for the deal. If you're going to try to be an operator here, you know, saying that you did this stuff, but it's going to be potentially your first time. I just don't want to go down that path because I have people lending money that I'm, that I have existing relationships with. Yeah. So, so that's kind of like where that fell apart. And, like I said, I'm 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 gonna be hosting an event tomorrow uh, in in New Jersey, Haddonfield, with this guy. He is really trying to relationship with me, and um, he does what he calls asset based lending. There's definitely money to bring to the table. So far, he's like, you'll be able to find a property in the area that he has off market, and he goes, he's like. No more than thirty thousand you have to put into it, and in six months I can refi like most of it out, seventy percent. He said hmm. it'll be section eight cash flowing, three to three to five hundred dollars. Now, if somebody that was I just met, I would say that's all bull, but he definitely has credibility, and a lot of people that have done business with him. So that might be the path that I might be going. Cool. Yeah, I'd probably post up on the school community or. YouTube. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna post about it. I'm also like I have money, but I I, I was told actually even by Pace um mm -hmm. that I should not be using my own money. He's like use your money in case like everything else fails. But he's like it's better to go raise money about that. Like Yeah, the reason he's saying uh, that is because um of scalability, right? And so he uh, actually I, I spent the entire day with Pace yesterday <laughs> and uh that was pretty cool. I spent it at his house and I learned a lot. And uh, he was ragging on me about that. He's like, man, you bought three houses with your own money. That's so stupid. And I was like, yes, I get that. But for me, I don't know what your situation is, but for me, I want to get uh, a year of history behind me. So I'm only 10 months in. Well, I, since April, but my first house I bought in August, but I didn't bring it online until January in the strategy that I'm in. So for me, I'm doing it for a different reason. One, I want to learn. And two, I want to have that year of history behind me because I've got people that are throwing money at me and I'm, I'm telling them no. So how long, I guess, for your situation, how long have you been, do you have history behind you? I mean, I'm a traditional real estate like agent. I, I This year we have done a couple of fix and flips with a couple of innovation deals in our local market. So we have history in a sense that we have brought in partners, collaborated and partner up with them. Um, we, in most cases, brought money, uh, which came from somebody else. So we basically acted as we call it in our, in our subject community as connectors. Oh, okay. So you've got some history, you've got some credibility, you're building, so that's good. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was with Pace on Thursday when he came down to Philly, and he actually shot a video saying that everybody should be working with me around this area. So hopefully that's going to that's gonna give it some legs. I posted on my Facebook group. When the first person reached out to me and said they had um, a property to, let, to, to sell, which was a terrible deal. It didn't work out. And another person posted um, that they have money that they want to place that's in their subdirect IRA. Okay, cool. Cool, man. Hey, Ricky. Hey, how's it going? How's it going, man? I always like your background. <laughs> I don't know what it means, but it's just different. It reminds me of, like Star Trek or something. And it's also weird because it's right above your head. So it looks like a crown, you know? <laughs> <laughs> King Ricky. Uh... <laughs> I, I wouldn't go that far, but <laughs> someday, man. Yeah. Uh... All right. Oops. So, Jared, what did Pace tell you that you mind sharing with the group here? He's always dropping like really interesting nuggets. Um, we talked, we talked a lot about history and people, and I don't really know if I want to bring it up here. I know this is a safe space with real estate and all that, but you know, he, you know, actually, I, I'll bring it up because this this is a different audience. I would say, in general, outside of this audience, like. I was, he actually kind of changed my mind. I, I, we talked about the system and how we do it. We did a couple of videos for co-living, which is why I was there. And uh, he said, Hey man, what time is your flight? And I was like, Oh, it's like seven o'clock. And he's like, come on downstairs. So I went down, this house is ridiculous. I didn't even see, I got lost in this frigging house, but I went down to the, and yes, I was impressed by the house, but his studio I went down to his studio and he had like 10 people down there and they were doing this. Um, no one left behind challenge thing. It was crazy. So I spent the whole day with, but before any of all that stuff, we were talking about human nature and people. And he had a different take that I hadn't thought about before. And he might be right, but I'm still thinking about it. But I, I was talking about, you know, on here, I've talked about the system and how, you know, you got to, he calls it breaking out. I call it waking up or what I consider myself for most of my life was a um, financial sleepwalker. That's what I came up with. Cause you know, I just did what the system said to do, you know, you, you, you go to school, you get a good job. You know, for me, I had to join the army to get the money to go to school and then found out it was only good for about a year and work my butt off to get this degree and got the degree and got the job. And then I get the job and I go through 24 years of my life and realize it's a game and I, I guess I'm playing and I'm on like first base, <laughs> right? I'm like, Son of a bitch. So, um, and I was like, man, I, I was upset about the system. And he, he said something that I thought was really weird. He said, yes, I thought that too for a long time, but then he, he's met a ton of people and he said that he thinks that most people, not this isn't this group though, this group, the fact that you're even here, the fact that you're looking to try to better and, and earn, you're, you're probably in a different category. But he was, I think he would say probably 75% of people in the population um, are, they want to be taken care of. They're basically lazy in his eyes. I'm not, I don't know if I agree or disagree because I haven't met all the people he's met, but that's what he said. And he said, he mentioned Henry Ford and how he came up with the manufacturing process. And some of that was to leverage or that type of mentality was to leverage some of that laziness and give them at least a path to do something productive. Otherwise, I don't know. It was kind of a weird take on it. I, I guess I, I can see where he's coming from, but he said people in general, people are lazy. And, uh, and in the sub two community that no one left behind challenge, I know people don't know about that, but basically he did this thing where even people that are in his group that paid money to be there, hadn't done anything in a couple of years. So he, this guy is a, I know there's a lot of haters out there, but I got to see this guy in real time and I've been around him for a couple of years. He's kicking and screaming, dragging people, trying to get them to, to see it. And it's interesting, a, a portion of the people, they get that little taste of success and it's like a kickstart and boom, then they start to take off. So I think that's what he's doing. He's just dragging people, trying to get them to see, see the light, so to, so to speak. Um, it was just a really mind blowing day for me. You know, I'm so focused on, you know, me and my goals and family and all this stuff. And I got to see what, what this guy's doing. A guy's worth what millions. And he's taking his time, built his house out studio in his house. So he could be with his family. That was the most impressive thing to me was his family was there. His kids were in diapers running around the house and, you know, his wife was there in the house, but he's got all these strange people. And I talked to Laura too. I said, Hey, 
Laura, is it weird having all these strange people coming in your house all the time? And she goes, yeah, in the beginning it used to be, but now it's, uh, now it's okay. And she goes, you want a tamale? <laughs> I don't know if that was to shut me up or, uh, <laughs> she's being nice, but yeah, it was an interesting experience, but anyway, sorry about all the side talk there. So if, uh, we didn't know what Dennis was asking about, I spent the day with Pace Morby yesterday. So that was interesting. So anyway, back you to, know, back to the group. Oh, good. You know, I actually, um, I mean, I spent probably six, four to six hours with Pace on Thursday and, um, I think it's asking the right questions. The problem is that with most people, they don't know what the right questions are. And I, I believe in my opinion that people are very self, and look, I'm not trying to knock anybody here or anything like that, but let's talk for what it is. If you dare, what you call it lazy in a sense that they are lazy to even get past their current state because there's, there's fears that people have. And a lot of them have fear of failure. And you know, Pace shows it so simple. I'll, since you share, I'll share a nugget that Pace shared with me. And he actually, every time Pace shares stuff with me privately, he goes and talks about it on No One Left Behind Challenge. That's the funny part about it. But he said to me, he's like, listen, he's like, think about Michael Jordan. He's like, whenever you look at someone that's like a basketball player, he's like, he made it look like basketball was the most simple things out there. Because he had a he has his, you know, three, three ball strikes. He was just able to get in 99% of the time, right? What people don't know is that Michael Jordan spent so much time failing. And he's like, you know, he's like, I failed so many times. He's like, I have pretty much almost went bankrupt at least a couple of times. He's like, what I always said to myself is that I'm just going to keep going no matter what. And... I don't know if anybody here watches uh, Netflix, but there's a show that actually I can relate to a little bit. And it's, and it's not even the show, but what I heard you saying that show. And the show is called Outer Banks. Anybody familiar with that? What, Outer what's Banks? it called? Outer Banks. Outer Banks? That's like a sci-fi yeah. thing, right? No, 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 it's not. It's basically um, kids that come across an opportunity to get very wealthy because they find connections to a ship that was sunk off the coast of Carolina. Okay. And what happens throughout throughout the, the series, it's 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 now four seasons in deep, is that they actually show kind of like the question and they're like, how far are you willing are you willing to go for to get what you're to get what you want? You know, most people don't know what they want. That's number one, I think. You know, they, they think they want this, but a lot of times when it really comes down to it, it turns out to be the complete opposite component. And it's something that Pace told me, and it's something that I'm putting in myself from what I've seen. And the second thing that I'll say is that there's like that shot that that the moderator asked that question. And I mean, there is betrayal, there's um, larceny, there's murders that happens in, in, in that. And at the end, they still they still get the gold. But they have to they have to, they have to go through all of that. And I think a lot of people don't really understand that. Real estate, it's not like stock market where you just go and you put you put your numbers, if you're a day trader especially, I'm not a day trader, but I have friends are, and just, you know, watch the market. But even but even that, those people that are true traders, they know exactly what's going on with wheat, what's going on, you know, whatever products that they're they're betting on. So I think what what's happening with a lot of people in the real estate community. Uh, whether they're waking up or not, they 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 get into it. They get really, my wife calls it scammed by what they see on YouTube where people go and, you know, they get this property and now they're cash flowing. And really comes down to at the end is that to some extent, I think a lot of people don't want to work. They think that, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit my job that I hate. I'm going to go do real estate. And the reality is, you're gonna to have to work double, and you're still gonna you're still gonna hate what you're doing, even in real estate. Just just kind of my thoughts. Yeah. Funny thing is, I love real estate, man. I didn't know I did. I freaking love it. And so for me, uh, I would I would love to get into real estate. I just I want to get a little bit more. I have a base right now. Like for for example, I was just talking to my wife before this. I know in my heart that if I was to quit Intel, which I'm not gonna do, but if I was to quit Intel move to Arizona, which I can't do because I have kids here and I got another four years till I can do that. I would crush it 
as a co-living operator. I mean, I'm not trying to be arrogant. I just, I just, I, I know at my heart, I could, you know, network with people. I've got people right now that I could go out and I could, I could manage their properties by my own and just and create a business out of that. But one, I don't want another job, right? I'm trying to get my time back. You know, I could do that for a little while or whatever, maybe hire somebody and put them in there. But uh, I actually really, really like the real estate. I heard Dion or somebody, I think it was, I don't know if it was Dion, but one of the three guys that they don't actually like real estate. They're just doing it as a means to an end to get their life back. Maybe it was Dion. I don't know. But for me, I actually like it. I like the deals. I like working with people and networking and all that stuff. So well, what do you guys feel about that? Why can't like you recreate that? Like, like you say that in Arizona, but like you can recreate it. You don't have to. You can put people in place and train them to do the business. And you, then you could, but that's a job in itself overseeing yeah. people. I, the only reason I was able to do it last year is because I had the time, I, it wasn't working. So but that'd be interesting to go down that path. Like, do you guys, maybe we'll go through one way. Let's we'll start at the top. Is that cool? Like, hey, John, oh, John, are you back? He's still detached. Uh, Ricky, you're at the top there on my list. Do you like real estate? Or are you doing this as a means to an end? Uh, a little bit of both. I like the uh, aesthetic of improving improving the community because uh, finding older properties and bringing it up to standard, I just love the look of it and just loving that the city or the town is not getting destroyed over time and just looking decrepit. It's just bring it up the standards and people can live there for, you know, nice. pretty cheap or bring it up the market price or whatever. So I, I like a little bit of both of it, uh, but I also am somewhat lazy. So I like the aspect of I can make real estate work by just overseeing things and not putting too much uh, sweat equity into it if I had to. Yeah. Have you talked to or met Millennial Mike by chance, Ricky? No, I would love to meet Millennial Mike. Uh, you guys Mike. should talk. I, I've met him a few times. You guys should talk. You guys have a lot in common. Uh, I'll, I'll, I've got his number. Maybe I'll, I'll ping him and say, hey, man, you got to talk to this guy, Ricky. I think you guys would get along. He's investing in Gary, Indiana, right? Like, just, <laughs> the king of uh, Indiana. Yeah, he's doing. <laughs> he's crazy, man. Like I joked around and said, does your property manager have a, a, a bulletproof vest and a gun? And he goes, actually, she does. <laughs> I'm like, damn, <laughs> that was a total joke. But uh, anyway, sorry. Uh, hey, is it cool if I go down the list and ask this? So, so Dennis, you already gave it. Hey, Mark, you got to speak, man. Do you like real estate or are you doing it as a means to an end? He's probably working. Mark and Mikey like to lurk. I call them lurkers. They just hang out and lurk. I'm always working. I'm just here to support. But I already <laughs> commented. I said, I don't like real estate. I just like making trouble. I like the networking part of it. You do like making trouble. I got to give you that. <laughs> I like to stir it up, I, man. I, I like to keep it interesting. That's what I like to do. Yeah. No. Yeah. That. I mean, I, I like building wealth, I guess. That's how you would put it. Yeah. So you're and not, it's really, interesting. I would have guessed, I, is that because, let, let me, this might sting a little bit, but I'm going to ask it anyway, but before you got kind of, you know, in over your head a little bit, were you, did you like real estate then? Or did, once you got a little deep and you kind of got a little sketched out there, was that where you started to, or did you always not like it or just kind of like it? Or did that change your mind? No, I think it's more just, I, I'm definitely like Dion where it's, the late I'm not I'm not trying to flip homes I'm not trying to rent by the room I'm not so it's really for me it's really kind of a boring mm. you know you can only look at a property so much and analyze mm. it so much and you know so for me it's kind of just like yeah it, it's there but I don't I'm not going all I'm not going down all these different paths to to doubt. I mean, maybe if I was younger and I was going to be branching out and trying to do different things, yeah. then it might be a little more interesting. But right now it's kind of just, you know, yeah, I'm having fun with it, you know, buy and hold. I mean, I like learning about it, but I'm not going to sit there analyzing properties all day and, and, and doing that. And, but yeah, it's more fun just, you know, hearing what you guys are doing and, you know, connecting with everyone and, and yeah. kind of stir, stirring the pot once in a while, you know, like the community, the people part, not necessarily <laughs> real estate. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 What about you, Gina? 
do you uh do you I like real estate, estate or you just are you just doing it as a means to an end well, I was, uh, well, I am a, a realtor. And so I always liked it. You know, when I first bought my first condo, I was like, this is fun. So, but I get, I do get locked, trapped with the, um, the shiny ob object syndrome. And I, I could analyze something all day long and I do a lot of analysis and I'm, I'm, I'm interested in all kinds of investments. So my problem is, you know, limiting, you know, Focusing, Focus, yeah. understanding the really what is the purpose? What is that? You know, what is the goal? Because I'm like, oh, I could do this, I could do that, I can constantly, you know, all these things I could do. It's like, to what end? What's what's the? And so I'm, you know, for me, I'm looking. I want to. I need to work more on analysis and like a, like really like, knowing all the details of what makes a good deal. What is a good deal? What are the factors that go in and there's so many moving parts. Like, how do we, you know, look at is it, you know, insurance cost and property tax rate, not just the price, but the rate, uh, you know, and then there's, you know, of course, and then you, you know, as square price per square foot is the rent, you know, and then actually the the rent always almost comes in the last last to play. It's more about like, I don't know, can I afford it? But it's it's hard to for me to go okay Gina just look at this as a, a number, um, which is why I'm like oh I should get into note invest I should do notes or I know a guy something, who does that something that's just numbers and it's like that definitely doesn't sound as much fun. Yeah, um, well if you're trying to be passive, there's a guy named Sunny Sukumar. That's what he does. He does note investing. I can put yeah. you guys together if you want. So. <laughs> No? Okay. I, that's my I, yeah that's my point it's like yeah no thanks thanks Jared I might you know but I'm like I'm like you were doing you're doing the room rental and I'm like that's cool and now I'm kind of like oh then there's residential assisted living that would be definitely strong in my market I'm 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 open to all of this stuff and so it's like a lot too much analysis not enough time and I I, I gotta focus on like actions like right now I'm opening my mail it's like get this stuff going yeah. action well since we started down this path let's hit up the last three people if you guys don't mind uh, herman what the, do you like real estate or is it a means to an end um i think i like uh, real estate i think um you know i i have been doing different things and then i just you know ex explore like i try trading i try options selling done that um i have my own it consulting company i have a nine to five you know nice just, you know do do all this stuff and then i started investing like maybe 10 years ago it, it, it's basically start with my first house and then i have to move and then i just you know keep the first one as a rental right just kind of like i accidentally become an investor um and then after all this, I think I kind of always go back to real estate. So I think I, I kind of like it. But I, I mean, to be honest, it's, it's a love-hate sometimes. <laughs> what, what, I, what I find out is I, I tend to, I'm the type of a person who tends to do a lot myself. And I know that it's a shortcoming. And I'm trying to really uh, try to delegate more stuff to yeah. other people. So, so now, I mean, I, I still think that there are some certain stuff that I need to know the basic knowledge about because, you know, working with, you know, contractors or, you know, other people, you know, um, you, you kind of need to know some stuff, right. You know, not to be ripped off. Yeah. So, but, but, so, you know, after all these years, I, I think I have a, a, a basic handle of it. Uh, but now I'm really working towards, you know, I'm, you know, getting an assistant, you know, trying to work together with some other folks on, on, on some stuff. So I'm, you know, going that path. Um, I like, I like the fact that, okay. So I think real estate is so broad. It's, it's, there's so much. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, it would be wise for anybody to identify what within real estate that he or she likes the most, and then just kind of stick with it a little bit more and then and then i think that the journey would be more pleasurable and and less 
frustrating. Um, that's what I discovered. I um, and what was I going to say? Oh, I th I think the other thing is, I think real estate compared to other things is more scalable. So as as long as you know the industry, you know how to find good deals. You are able to get good deals. Money is not a problem, right? You know, you get all those private money uh, opportunities. So that's an industry that, you know, anybody who wants to scale up is, is, is easier than, I would, I would definitely say that to scale up a real estate business is much easier than scale up an IT consulting business. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, and, and maybe perhaps even, you know, trading, you know, option, you know, things like that, if you're doing it by yourself. It's, it's also hard to scale up because now you have to, you know, set up a fund, you know, go through all this SEC stuff. If, if you are, you know, doing trading and you want to scale up, not just using your own money, then there's a lot of regulations that you have to, you know, be compliant with. So the, the fact that real estate actually let anybody to scale easier, I, I think to me is a great upside because I, I do want to own, you know, you know, uh, something a little bit more. So I, I think, you know, real estate give me that opportunity. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's a long answer. Yeah. You said something there that I originally, because I couldn't make my home state work and everybody and the rich said, Hey, invest where you live, that kind of thing. I couldn't do that. Just the numbers didn't work. So I had to invest out of state. And now a year later, I realized that was actually a bonus because it forced me to put people in place. I didn't have the option of doing it myself and I would have. So that's why, and I did a little bit, but I'm out of state. So it was actually a, I thought was a negative, but turned out to be the best thing for me, right? It's interesting how often that happens, you know, like, oh, this sucks, but yet it turns out to be a good thing. So anyway, well, cool. Hey, thanks for, hey, hey Karen, how about you? How about we pick on you? Do you uh, like real estate or is it a means to an end for you? Morning morning i guess it's afternoon <laughs> um i love real estate i i i just love it yeah i like everything about it to be honest yeah, so too. if i could do it full time i would but um last week you asked a question though um I know it's kind of sidetracking, but you asked if we were slum lords or how we felt. I just want you to know my friend and I went and looked at a fourplex yesterday that we were talking about buying. So we did the whole tour and everything. And um, there was mold in these people's oh. apartments. And I mean, a lot of mold in their apartments. And they want... Uh, almost 800,000 for this fourplex. And I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. I'm like, this is unsafe. And these people should not even be living in here. Yeah. I mean, it was bad, but so I wanted to let you know that they're out there. Yeah. I've heard. Well, Mikey, you're last man. Do you like real estate? We're going to force you to talk here or is it a means to an end for you? I'm lazy. Dion tricked me. When when I understand Dion and his mind tactics, he he draws you in, he gets you in with a lazy, yeah. But then the more and more stuff you watch of him, you realize, oh wait, he's really good with his mind tactics. Yeah. yeah. But now that I'm in it, you know, I'm I love it, but it's more of a means to an end for me. Whereas like as soon as I hit my number, I'm probably gonna slow down a lot. Yeah. See, I'm not, I'm not putting a cap on myself. I, I mean, I, I have a, I had goals and I've hit a few of them and I hit a big one. And I'm happy with it. And then there's this major goal I want to get to. I'm going to get to Dion status, right? The 200 K a year. That's what I want to get, but I'm not going to say I'm out. Cause I've even in the last year and a half, maybe you guys have seen this, you know, as you progress in your investment journey, no matter how fast or slow, I think you change, you become a different person. I think I've changed at least three times in this journey. So I started out one way, learn some, every time you learn, you know, if you adapt, I guess it's adapting. I've become a different person as I go. And then I think that can change your goals. Like you may have a goal and you may hit it, you may be out. But I think there's, 
you know who says this best is coach carson you ever watch any of his stuff the um the mighty and oh, what's his channel the small and mighty and small and mighty investor or i don't know what his channel but coach carson that guy he says it's like climbing a mountain you know you you don't go to the summit day one you you go up the mountain take a break at the at the base camp and go to the next one the next one I, I like that analogy even though i'm not hiking a mountain <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, I like that analogy cause that's kind of what I think I've been doing. So I kind of climbed a little bit and then climbed a little bit. And then as I climb and I have that base camp, I'm, I'm reflecting on that. And so I'm like, all right, this worked, that didn't work. And then your path kind of changes as you go. That's kind of how I see it. So who knows, maybe I'll get to that number and realize, you know, especially after seeing Pace's house. And I, I told the wife, I was like, yeah, it's really, really nice. And all this stuff, but I don't know if I'd want to have his life. And she goes, eh wouldn't mind you know <laughs> so you know who knows so we'll see where we go from here so i'm not going to put a cap on it but i'm going to try to hit these goals so anyway all right what should we talk about next guys hey jared so oh, hey yeah, john okay. sorry we're getting back to you john you you were you were saying we lost you there for a while so we didn't know yeah that. i know uh i'm paying for super fast internet and it just died for some reason uh i had a uh speech professor who said uh the more you look at things the more things you look at that change. Mm, yeah. So um, I, for me, it's a means to an end. The The part that I actually love about it is actually the um, more of the building or the doing of it. Like, you know, because eventually the goal is to have, you know, three, four properties and then build a hobby farm. Well, that's the whole building, the development side of it kind of thing. And then the numbers. So. Oh. Yeah, I learned something in this journey already that I I, I want to do, which I didn't know before I started, which is I want to learn stuff and then try to pass that down to other people. It's kind of why I'm doing this. I don't know Jack, but I've learned a few things here and there. And I think it's kind of cool to like what Zuber's trying to do, grow the community, right? I just think that's awesome. And and Pace, by the way, Pace is doing the same thing. He's just doing it on a bigger scale. And like I said, he's dragging people, kicking and screaming. They don't want not, not that they're against their will. They want to do it. They're just in the lazy space, I guess. Hey, Jared, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. You asked? yeah. So my question for everybody is here. Has anybody legitimately lost money in real estate? And if you did, how did you come back from that? I, I'll, I don't think I've lost money, but I've made mistakes that cost me money. I guess that's losing money, like a heating thing and a couple of things. But I think it, somebody else probably has a better example. Well, lost in what way? Besides, you know, I mean, there's expenses, there's evictions, there's vacancies. That's, I feel like it's a loss, but. Um, lost to the sense that you're like, I cannot believe I'm in real estate. That I can't believe, I'm sorry, say that again, Dennis? That I'm in real estate. What was I thinking when I was getting into it? Or maybe somebody knows somebody that, that said, said to them. Oh, I, but still stay in it. I know people that lost kidding. hundreds of thousands if that's what you want, but not me personally. So what what when you talk to them, what was their like their mentality like? Like I almost feel like to some extent real estate, and, and I'm gonna speak for myself, it's almost like playing a game. And so I'm related to dating and then finding the prom queen or the prom king, or uh being able to you know, score in hockey, whatever, whatever your your sport, you know, love is. That's how I look at it. That's how I look at it. It's almost kind of like a, you negotiate your way to your success. But when you're negotiating your way to success, but then like your tenants stop paying you, you have to evict them. It takes up to two years. And then when you evict them, you find out that they totally destroyed your property and you're going to be basically selling out of 50 to 100,000 lots. I went through that, by the way. Yeah, I think of it, it's just, it's lessons learned. It's like, okay, that was some expensive education. <laughs> and I mean, it's easy to, 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 to laugh about it, but obviously there's a, okay, that's, that's a good point. I'm like, I'm, I am hesitant because it is like, you know, there's a lot of sleep lost over, especially during a process, a process of buying or selling. There's some sleep loss, there's some worry, uh, you know, there's like, people aren't responding fast enough. And so it's, it, for me, it really does. I can't just like, oh, well, it'll, it'll handle work out. So it is, you know, a nice when it's 
and things are done and settled and then you get that the, the eviction thing and that's another stressor or you know something really random that you're like I don't know how to deal with this I don't know how to handle it and then that's another story that you're like so I'm I mean for me now I'm I'm shoring up yeah even though I'm feeling like I'm feeling like why am I even in this community because I right now I don't think I have any intention of buying property for the next for two more years I I have a mind I have a view that things are going to run up and then they're going to crash and then I'll be buying in a few years uh, that's where I'm at I mean certainly we all know you can find deals all, all stages I think and you make deals during all stages so I, I absolutely believe in that but um I think maybe because I have I don't have enough resources reserves to sleep at night <laughs> right now sleep well I can sleep but I can't sleep well uh that I'm like right on I'm like it, maybe that's where I'm like I think you know I could say part of me if I I know if I I think I'm I'm, I'm thinking right now if I were to actually reinvest my some money I just said it sold a property and I'm thinking I'm going to pay that tax and then so I can sleep have some cash but it's like but then there's always that temptation but Gina you could just buy you know you could get a bolt, get them, get a, get a duplex, you know, da, 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 you know, that'll, and, you know, but then I'm like, ah, oh, but I won't have that peaceful sleep. <laughs> There's going to be another headache. <laughs> you know, that's funny. You brought that up. I, I know with absolute certainty that paying off my primary or one of the rentals is a mathematical mistake. And I know Dion talks about losing millions, but you just hit on something there. So I, I'm probably going to chip away at my primary, even though, and I know you guys are going to freak out on this, but I have a two and a quarter rate on the house and I know it's beating inflation and I don't care what the numbers say. Um, just go to the grocery store, but I kind of want to attack that and, and pay it down and pay it off. And and the reason why is exactly what you said, sleep at night. There, 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 there's a value to that. You can, not a monetary, well, I guess it is a monetary because I don't have to pay that mortgage, but I, that's what's in my head and I, I understand what you're saying there Gina I, I do so John do we want to circle back to what you were saying at the beginning I know we lost your internet there and you were I forgot even what we were talking about your your ADU and everything yeah uh, we were talking about how I didn't pay closing um yeah I want to hear that how did you how did that happen so um the uh the realtor that was selling the property was actually uh from about 80 miles away and they work in a different MLS and they didn't pay to list it in the local MLS. Hmm. They didn't put a sign in the front yard and they had a lockbox on the door, but there's a storm door in front of it. So you couldn't even see that there was a lockbox on the property. And I guess it had sat on the market, you know, like 40 something days when I made my offer and um, it was listed as a four bedroom, two bath. But it did talk about in the description about how it was rented out to uh, travel nurses on and off for the ADU side. And I saw that as a uh, an opportunity to actually make it a legitimate ADU, which my my town allows. Um, for that matter, my town actually allows me to build another one in the backyard, um, which would be a really tight squeeze. Um, it could fit. But um so I made an offer and they countered, I came and looked at the house and then I made a new offer um, that was a hundred dollars more than my first offer. And uh, we moved forward. Uh, so ultimately speaking, I just had to pay the down and of course I'm house hacking it. So, um, and then in my mind, I'm using the money that would have gone to closing normally as the money that's remodeling it. So I'm still doing pretty decent all in all. Yeah. Um, it's challenging to get some of the pricing on some of the contractors, but well, I still don't get why the why you didn't have to pay closing just because they were in different from uh, MLS different location. I don't understand that. Closing so, costs? Are we talking? Closing costs. I got the seller to pay uh four percent towards closing. Oh, got you. Plus, plus four thousand plus replace the hot water heater. Because it wasn't listed, though, how does it correlate? I, in in my mind, it's because no one locally knew it was for sale. <laughs> Nobody in the neighborhood knew it was for sale. Okay. My realtor didn't know it was for sale because it wasn't listed in the local MLS. So it was listed in a different MLS where the other realtor was. 
So that didn't come up on Zillow or Realtor.com? The, the, the only place it came up was on Zillow. So, but anybody who was getting like um, the uh, the MLS feed from their realtor or things like that. So like investors. Yeah, that's cool. Who, were, who weren't really scouring the Zillow like I was besides wouldn't have seen it. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So I think it was sort of a little bit overlooked, which ultimately was to my benefit. I love that. That's so cool. So, yeah, it's not like it was magic. It was just, it wasn't listed in this local MLS. So it was less, um, you know, less known about. So, and from my standpoint, because I was going to have to put money into it, uh, the, um, them paying the closing and the fact that it had a new roof made me feel a lot more comfortable about it, especially because going from an apartment to my first house in 15 years. Cool. Congrats, John. Yeah, good job. Thanks. Hey, I wanted to say thank you to this group. I think it was two weekends ago. I brought up a question about buying a house and my perspective and losing money on it and everybody, every single person told me no. And so for once in my life, I actually listened to people. And so, but I did go look at the house and I did talk to the wife and we're still kind of like, eh, but we're not, we're not going to do it. We made a decision. I think today that we're not going to do it, which thank you. So uh, I was about ready to, to do it. And I still kind of half ass one, but I'm, I'm trying to listen to people. So we're not, we're not going to do it. So. Of course, my realtor wants me to do it, but I know why he wants me to do it. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, man. You know, and I'm like, yeah. real estate never goes down. Well, it's actually I mean, um, it would be a good long term play. But right now we're kind of focused kind of half and half cash flow. Uh, this would be pretty much lose money for the first year and then break even. So it doesn't make any sense. It's like a five year appreciation play. It's an awesome neighborhood like. It's no HOA, and I would have bet money it was an HOA because it is immaculate, and it's just a beautiful house at the end of it. I mean, everything about it, and I'm like, oh, man, and it's all remodeled and done everything. I was like, ah. and it's it's had two, it's been on a contract twice, and so we'd be the third, right? It's been on the market for like 60 some odd days. And we can make it a really issues. aggressive offer? I was thinking, yeah, but even with an aggressive offer, um, you know, we they're asking 545. We were going to come in at 480. Which I think is fairly aggressive um, and probably, you know, haggle and whatever, even if we came out, it, it doesn't move the needle that much. You still lose the money and, and then it, it's just, and it's a four bedroom, two and a half bath. And so for me to make it work, I'd have to basically live in the garage because I was going to buy it as a primary. And this is Arizona, man. So like I'd put a split, a uh, mini split in the garage and stay there um, once a month for two days out of the month. Don't talk yourself back into it, Jared. I know, I know, but I mean, it's just like so. Yeah. Anyway. Well, wait a minute. You're worried about losing money there, but you're going to take money and pay down a 2.75 percent mortgage. 2.25. 2.25. When you could stick it in in at my PNC account and get 4.7 percent, it's not and about actually money. make money on the difference. It's not an arbitrage. The I, I know the number. I know the math. It has zero to do with logic and all that. It has to do with what Gina was talking about, which is peace of mind. Having the house paid off would be like part of this, you know, I'm the only income earner, right? And so I have to make sure everything's cut and I can't screw up, right? And so I have the job well, and all this stuff. And so it had everything to do with what Gina was talking about, which is peace of mind. But what about knowing that you got the entire amount of the mortgage sitting in the bank, making more than it's costing you and you could pay it off tomorrow? Oh, I don't have that. Uh, well, I know, but I mean, you know, the time it will take you to pay it off, you could turn around and set the money aside in what's still available as a high yield savings account. Yeah, and then you could be like, well, you know, honey, I can't pay off the house tomorrow, but I've got 18 months worth of payments. Well, if that was the case, I could sell two properties and what we have in the bank and pay the house off right now. I could do that. But the piece hey, of Jared, money... What what, what 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 about insurance? Have you do you have insurance like life insurance and disability insurance? Like yeah. you're the only breadwinner. Yeah. yeah. So doesn't that give you a peace of mind? I guess yeah, it does. It gives me peace of mind. It's just um, I was trying to liken my thought process to what Gina was saying about how she wants to have that peace of mind, and I was basically saying there's I think there's value to that, not a monetary value, but a conscious peace of mind kind of Zen thing. I don't know what you want to call it. So I was agreeing. So, with I see it. 
So I, I was born in Ukraine, uh, the former Soviet Union, and this ha actually happened after I immigrated to the United States. There's a lot of people that had peace of mind until they went into their bank account that day and it became worthless. So, you know, I guess maybe it's a mindset thing, um, but just something to think about. I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen with the dollar. I hope it's not that what's going to happen with the dollar. But when we think of peace of mind, I think that we can do as much as we can because there's so many unknowns. Yeah. For me, the peace of mind, what I mean is like a lot of this is to pay our bills and survive. Right. So now we've got income coming in to, to pay our monthly expenses. But if I if I didn't have the mortgage payment, I think that, you know, for the family, I could work at Burger King and make the tax and insurance. You know what I mean? If I absolutely had to, that's that's what I mean by peace of mind. It's not like, um you know, losing money in the bank account. If I had the deed in my hand and I guess you could say, well, somebody could come take your house or whatever, I, you know, there's all that kind of stuff. But I just mean in our current economic environment and I have to make this mortgage. If I didn't have to make that mortgage, I could sleep better at night. Not that I don't sleep at night. I just was trying to agree with Gina. Well, that's super cool. I think, I mean, I feel like I'm similar in your situation. I I have, uh, I think I'm 3.75 on my primary. I have at this point, that's why I'm, I'm trying to get my wife to commit to that is for us to open up a HELOC on it because I think at this point we have, I mean, we probably have close to 400,000 equity. And it's like just dead money sitting there, you know, but she's not, and she's the realtor, you know, she's the actual real estate agent that goes out there and she's done, 20, we've done 20 deals this year. So we're not top realtors, but you know, I mean, we're doing about three to five deals a month uh, starting in April. That's, that's um, a lot right now in this market. No, actually, actually in South Jersey, I mean, it's still a seller's market. I know that I'm hearing it a lot from the from the West Coast, and it's it's still a major seller's market in our area. Like, you get a property under four hundred thousand because that meets essentially the interest rates for people that can afford um, and affordability. From that standpoint, it goes off multiple offers. We we actually bought a property. I'll post about it. Um, a case study. I partnered up with a sub two student. Uh, we got it for 120 we sold it for 310 and we wow. had seven offers wow that's awesome man yeah i need about but it still need a renovation it needed about seventy thousand renovation um h uh, our money cost closing costs i mean we still we still did good yeah cool so speaking about peace of mind and comfort uh as you all some of you i'm not sure i know mikey no and uh karen knows I'm closing on my first property actually Monday. Um, and some people would say, oh, they're getting their first property. Like they're nervous. They can't sleep. And I, I can tell you, I sleep like a baby. Um, I, I haven't felt nervous about it. I guess it's because mindset wise, I know I got a really good deal. I know there's equity in the property. And uh, I just try to look for the positivity. And another thing I also look at it is, I was in combat. I got shot at. I almost died a couple times. And I was like, what is worse? I mean, buying this property, something something bad happened. Maybe I have to call uh file for bankruptcy. That's the worst case scenario. What what then? I can restart over in about five to seven years. Perspective, yeah. Perspective wise. I mean, if you look at it, I think Dion said that best. It's like yeah. you just look for the positivity. Um because I mean I have I do have things at stake. I'm married. I have, I have uh, my wife. We're going to be trying to start for kids next year, and I do have to worry about that. But just thinking about the property and what could go wrong, I, I don't worry about it. First, I, I have faith in God. I believe God will take care of me. And one of the first tests He gave me, actually, before the property even closed, is Hurricane Helen came through. Yes. I mean. Um, I <laughs> know, <laughs> right? Very first thing uh, before we even close. So the insurance company said, "Nope, we're not even going to cover it yet. We're blackout period and everything." So that's why it was delayed. But I, I just have I've been able to sleep. I'm not too worried. Maybe it's just Gen Z in me. I don't know. Uh, maybe all Gen Zs are just savage and just don't care about anything. Just run straight towards the danger. I don't know. But uh, maybe look at Millennial Mike. That might be the same thing going on too. Um, but how yeah, did you I, take down that property? Can you walk us through? Like, how did you do traditional loan? Did you do hard money? Uh, like, curious. So, I'm getting investment. 
I've gained an investment loan for 30 years. Um, so I had to put 25% down. I got this deal through my wife's boss. He's a real estate aid, uh, real estate broker. And he also is a real estate investor. He owns like over a hundred properties and he manages over like 200 properties from other people. And he said, I'm going to help this guy get a deal. So he came to my wife and he said, hook me up. Let me talk to him. So I've been talking to him for a while. It's like, let's do it. Hey, Brandon, how's it going? Um, he said, let's do it. So I was like, all right, we found one property. We put down an offer. I said, let's go disrespectful. I want to spit in that person's face. Let's go for it. It's been on the property for a long time. And he said, ah, someone else bought it. So he found this off-market deal. Someone came to him and said, this is, he, they're selling it to you for $85,000. And he said, he knew for a fact in that neighborhood, I should be able to get $70 a square uh, for uh, every uh, square feet. And it's 2,039 uh, 2039 square feet. So you're looking at between $140,000 to $150,000 uh, on the market. So I'm looking at $80,000 in equity. So I was like, man, this is crazy. Go for it. I, didn't, I was like, I we're did, not I even. a real estate investor, a real estate uh, broker gave you such a good deal. I'm just curious. Like, what was his motivation? Do you know? He loves helping people. He is really big on uh, charities uh, every Friday, which my wife is his uh, employee as pretty much the secretary property assistant. Every Friday, he don't even work. He just he just out there at the fairground. He's with the exchange club as their VP. So he puts a lot of time in charity. There's a uh, special needs um, homecoming that they help sponsor every year. And he just loves helping people. I mean, he, he made all his money already. That's how he looks at it. He just in it for charity. He actually got into real estate as a broker for charity purposes. He he, he didn't he didn't care to make the money. So that's that's how that he got so into cool. it. Cool. That is so cool that you found somebody like that. I guess oh. that's what you believe, right? I, I find that like there's people that got out there. They're people they like to take people that are younger, like in their twenties. We even in our local RIA, I see that sometimes. And I'm like, damn it, I missed the boat. I'm in my 40s. Can you please mentor me? Um, but I think that's what it is. It's, it's being, to some extent, vulnerable and being open. I think that there's a lot of people that are willing to help. I think it comes down to, once again, asking the right questions and maybe even showing what you are capable of and what you're going to potentially do with the property sometimes as well. But that's just such, such great things for sharing. It. Oh yeah, I mean he he's so excited about this. He said, "Hey man, I'm going to give you my uh, leasing contract. Uh, you can even use our background check system, just uh, uh, just for cost. Just uh, give us the money for cost, and you run the background check." He's all in it to just help me out, and I and I extremely love it. And I'm like, because I'm part of one run at a time, and because of his motivation, I'm like, I'm willing to help any person that's yeah. out there. Just uh, out there, and I and I actually be looking on uh, the MLS. Uh, uh, he actually gave me access to the MLS, and I be telling people that be looking for a house. It's like, hey man, you may not be looking for a rental, but here's a house here. Give a disrespect for all because I'm only looking for one rental at a time for each year. So I'm like, here's an offer. You should probably give them. Been on the market for this long. Go for it. I mean, I actually talked to. My wife's, uh, we went to go get my wife a new phone because uh, early birthday present and I don't believe in that. So I paid for it completely. And I was talking to the uh, guy that was uh, setting us up with the phone. I was like, let's talk about real estate. It's a perfect opportunity. So I talked about real estate and I said all the benefits, tax benefits, getting uh, rents, retirement, everything. And he's like, I may look into this. And I said, read uh, Mr. Kutasaki book. Um, it's slipping my mind right now, but um, rich dad, poor dad, rich dad, poor dad, and he rich said, dad, poor dad. That. and he said, I will read that, and I was like, man, I got oh. another one. It, it looked like his fire was lit. He looks like he was about to jump in it too. So I'm like, help as many people as possible. Yeah, reading that book, I, I and maybe because I come from a real estate family, mom was in real estate, my brother is a real estate attorney and stuff like that, but I did not like get the bug in real estate investing from reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I read it and everybody's like, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I look at it and I'm like, it's just because my upbringing has always been real estate. That's how I essentially felt. 
I'm just curious if anybody else who read Rich Dad Poor Dad made it out of there. But I, I you know, some people do say that Rich Dad Poor Dad, or from that, I for me it wasn't. It, it really wasn't. I didn't read it first. I read Tax Free Wealth by Tom Wheelwright, who's the accountant for Robert Kiyosaki. So I came in it with the real estate, well, actually from the tax perspective. So I, when I read Rich Dad Poor Dad, I had that on the mind. So I can't, I'm not an objective, uh, I can't respond to that objectively. Ricky, um, Rick Tavius, I'm sorry, I was gonna- uh, You call me Ricky. Ricky, okay, thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> um, I, um, I don't know why I felt like that was okay. Yeah, so um, yeah, the nervousness isn't, you know, it's, it's because I think, you know, and you're going to come do this too. You're probably already going like, you're going to be start to see things that you can do. And you're going to be like, you can test your waters. You start to get confident, you know, and knowledgeable. And, and, and certainly uh, if I'm not going to sleep, I don't make it, I'm not doing it. Cause it's obviously there's something that's not right. So once it's, when it's, you know, right. And I, I can cover plan, you know, plan A, plan B, plan C, or disaster A, disaster C, you know, I have, I have coverage for these, you know, what if scenarios. Yes, of course you can move forward and be totally confident. So I, you know, hundred percent agree. I think maybe at that, this I'm, I am at this point where I'm like, Hmm, I can see myself getting myself a little extended. Cause I do recognize there's there, I don't have the full, you know, uh, you know, everything I would need to like, I don't have that, that, I mean, maybe I do, I actually do have, well, I do have this reserves and that, but you know what, that's complicated. Just like we were talking about, you know, Jared saying, well, you could do this and put this into savings. It's like, yeah, that's a, that is an option, but it's like, and, you know, not speaking for you, but I'm saying for myself, it's like, that's another layer of complication. So it's not like I, I don't have other op ways to like exit a, a, a scenario. It'd be like, oh, it's like, Am I willing to do those complications to, to, and then still, so I can just keep moving forward. And maybe it's just today, I got too much going on trying to stabilize the, the couple of rentals I have. And, you know, once those are, I feel rock solid and then, then maybe I'll be like, okay, I can take this risk. I can go for it and, and, and have peace of mind and confidence then going forward. So, but I'm, I'm excited for you and I really appreciate that. You're very wise to, you know, to put, you know, to put your, you find that expert, be humble, be agreeable, be willing and use that youth and us older folks, you know, we use our wisdom, you know, that we've gained through the years. You have your own level of wisdom from your experience, but it's like, so everyone's got their own like strengths for today. And so I really appreciate you guys working it. I'm, I'm really happy for you. And you're paying it back to others and sharing that enthusiasm. There's abundance. I agree. I'm 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 a believer too. I'm, there's plenty of abundance. There's an abundance. So, you know, but we have to walk in wisdom. And uh, yeah, I will add on um, some things that keep me uh, keep the confidence in me is some of my military experience, uh, especially being in the infantry. Slow, smooth, smooth as fast, clearing rooms. That was one main thing. Also, another army uh, principle is. Uh, build up your fighting position, which can be uh, translated to any situation. For example, just in real estate, you get a property, building up your fighting position is stabilizing it. Make sure it's good and stable before you push out another 10 or 20 or 100 meters before you start taking more ground. So that, that's one, another thing that just brings that confidence. It's just that experience of that I learned from the military and also commitment. Uh, Sorry, Norsey, never forget the man. If he called me today, I'll go back. Uh, he told me we're going to hell and take it, uh, taking ground. I'll go right there. That's the man I will follow uh, anywhere. And he always stated, when you make a decision, good or bad, you commit to it because the worst type of decision is the indecisive decision. So it's funny there. how much the military uh, actually helped. I, I did it as a means to an end. I knew the day I signed up, I was getting out, but I did it to get the college fund. And, but I grew up, I learned discipline, I learned commitment, and I learned how to, I learned that um, you are capable more than you think you are. 
right? Like we used, you, you've done that. I know you have, but like they used to do the simple running, for example, like we'd go off base and run, you know, five, six miles and come around and then come back by the base and you think you're coming back. No, then you go back and you do another <laughs> yeah. couple miles and you come back, you know, oh, this time, no, it's like son of a, you know, we did this three or four times, you know, and then after a while you're like, I, I don't know. And then when you come back on base, you're like, oh, great. And you're coming back with, and then, oh, you deviate. And I'm like, son of a, you know, you never, <laughs> you know, they just break you down. So then, you know, like when these trials and tribulations come up, I had, you know, different things in real estate, you know, AC unit break and, you know, right in the middle of another trans, all this shit happens. Like you said, perspective. So like, it's nothing, man. Like I forgot the phrase, but uh, something along the line, ain't, ain't raining, ain't training, you know, things like that. Just oh yeah, mind. embrace then, the suck. Yeah, embrace the suck, man. That's what Zuber says. The first five years suck. And because of that mindset, it hasn't sucked as much because the stuff that has sucked, not that bad, you know? And so, I don't know. It's just, I think it's mindset, perspective, perseverance, just drive through, man. And so I, I love it. I didn't think that that experience uh, translated, but it does. Oh right? yeah, it really and does. Even corporate world, Intel, right? Like systems and process, you know, they beat it into OKRs, KPIs, all that crap translated. I was sitting there thinking, I was like, man, I'm jealous and I'm, I'm really envious of you, Ricky, because you know you're you're young, you found out early and all this stuff. And then I thought, well, you know, and then you said, you know, wisdom. It's like, okay, I've gained a little wisdom over the years, you know, the gray hair, I've paid for it, that kind of thing. So at <laughs> least I'm applying it. And I, I took it for granted too. I was thinking, well, everybody can do this. I've met a lot of people, and some people don't have the some skills like you know, just basic finances or organization skills, which I'm not saying I'm super organized, but a little bit and all that stuff I've taken from different experiences over my life, the wisdom, Gina, to put into effect. And I just took that for granted that, oh, everybody does that. No, that's not true. A lot of people don't have any of those right? <laughs> and they're still doing it. So good for them, you know, and I'm like, oh, okay. So I, I, I've learned that I'm in a better position than I thought I was just you know, going down this journey. I love, I love this, by the way, man, this is so cool getting to know you guys, you know, Ricky, you've been coming on or Brandon coming on, John, Gina, everybody, you know, I know Mikey's quiet and everything, but this is cool for me. I think um, Mark's on here, fire, firefighter, you know, he just likes learning and listening to people. I do too. You know, it's like this little mini community inside the big community. And I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah anyway. th thanks for leaving, heading it up. Oh, I just turn on the zoom and this, it just, flies so just wherever it goes it goes so brandon you joined on there you're pretty quiet you got a lot of stuff cooking don't you oh it's i'm just trying to get back settled down i've been um out having dinner and celebration of somebody's birthday so i i, I know i'd text you saying hey i'll be there i just was gonna be a little late but some of y'all might have saw, saw the post that i put out there on my youtube channel three days ago it was what it looks like with four properties today and 10 years from now. So what I chose to do, and y'all, I would love to hear what everybody's thought is. I like to hear real numbers. I feel like it puts more meaning versus just concepts. So I thought about this and and I had to really think through it to, so that my my wife would still be okay with this is I put some financial details out there and I posted what today's financials on the four unit four properties that I own and extrapolated what it looks like 10 years from now with just two and a half percent inflation and and I put real numbers. I put my real numbers and and presented that on a whiteboard. And here I have a my channel, um, and I'll put it in there again, the Build to Rent Texas. I have 88 subscribers, so I'm watching things. And what's viral is, is a, a nebulous number. Viral to me is a different number than viral to a, somebody that has a million subscribers. The the The... Most of my videos that I've posted, I've only got eight or nine, would get between 50, and I had one that got 115,000, 115 views. I post this one out three days ago, and as of this morning, there's over 500 views in three days, and it's still doing the hockey stick uh, exponential growth, I'm sorry, to the point where I'm getting 
texts from people I know thanking me for this video and making it real. And so I'm, I'm a little vulnerable. I'm telling, you know, what's going on financially from this video, but it was good for me. So when I was compiling it, it was a fourplex, triplex, duplex, and single family. That's my first four properties. It wasn't like that was a plan. That's just what it was when I was putting it together. And I was sharing just a few minutes ago at this lunch because they were asking me about, they'd seen it. And one of the people said, I saw it and I sent it to my husband. The power of four, we hear that all the time. As I took it, so this property, y'all can watch the video. It comes out to about 32,000 in cash flow today. And with just two and a half percent growth, it goes from 32,000 to 84,000 in cash flow in 10 years. That's me being 52 today to 62, and I plan to be retired. But other powerful things too, and I do mention it, I had to recut another section of the video at the end because I thought, oh, I need to share this. The net worth on just those four was 775,000 but it goes to 1.6 million in net net worth in those 10 years. And I pay off. I took the principle that I'm not going to recycle capital. I was already planning that before I met or watched Dion and met Dion, but it solidified it in my, in my mind. I've got to work, work cash flow. Ricky, you at your age, you could, you could definitely be on a strategy for now of recycling um, equity and cash out because you've got that time frame. Me in my 50s, I've got to be more looking to grow the cash flow. And so I went from just in this 10 years, my average was $266 cash flow per door. That's what it is today. To in this strategy over the next 10 years, it goes to $700 a door cash flow. And that's where it gets to that 84000 because I'm not taking cash out. C taking cash out limits my cash flow. You, if I was 20 years younger, I probably would recycle cash flow a little more because I've got more, I've got more runway. I don't have the runway that you have. And that's what we're all talking about. All of us that are a little older, it's, a, it's the same principles, but a little bit different because we're different in our life stages. So you, I guarantee you, it's the right thing to do at this moment to try to recycle cash flow once you get a few doors going to speed up the number of doors you own. But then at some point, you're going to get to that maturity stage, not the stabilization. Stabilization is after you just bought it, but the full maturity stage. And then you begin to really make efficient and grow your cash flow like I'm trying to do, like Dion's doing and like others. But that's what I was sharing for all of us at our stage. I started just four years ago at, at 48. And here I am with 10 units, four properties, but the power of that. So it's just interesting to see this video, how much it's resonating in the in within the subscribers, but within all the other people. And that's what I had somebody at lunch say to me. I love that you shared real numbers. It's meaningful. And so I'm actually thinking through this. I was doing that during church, unfortunately. I was thinking about it a little bit, that I'm going to break down each property and take one by one and explain what I did when I built it. Here's how much I built it for. I'm going to dive a little, do case studies on each of these four properties over the next several months. Maybe it's once a month I put that video out of that property. Plus I'm doing uh, uh, a journey with the ones I'm building right now. I'm building two right now. Um, they built the pad this, this weekend and doing the form boards. I'm going to cut the next series in that video once the foundation, the plastics put down on the ground so I can explain the beams, how they're going to pour it, the post-tension foundation. I think that's going to be my next one where I go from lot clear to right before they pour is going to be the next video. But I'm going to explain 
some financials to it and some ways, the reasons we graded the lot this certain way and the reasons we're doing the foundation a certain way. So I'm trying to do this. My goal is not to make money in YouTube. My goal is to share the journey and hopefully make an impact and share what I wish somebody would have shared with me, though I've had some people share. I want to be that for somebody else. That's my purpose in this YouTube channel. It's not going to be polished, spit polished. It's not. I've decided it's going to be me. It's going to be cut the way I know how to do it. And it's going to be more raw than the polished stuff that even we see with Coach Carson. He's gotten really good at it. Not saying it's wrong. That's but he but mine's going to be a little more raw and less yeah. polished. I'm thankful that that we're doing. I'm doing that too. Just document the journey because if it wasn't for people like mike zuber you know he doesn't need to do this he's set right he can travel right. the world do whatever the hell he wants but he's taking the time to help us out same thing with dion right you know he travels he takes the time to do this stuff right and then matt all these guys if it wasn't for them we'd be out there creating learning all these mistakes ourselves so be because of them and actually mark you're on here man i'm not trying to embarrass you but you saved my ass and you don't even know it because I, I don't I wasn't watching your videos or anything at that time, but I had met Dion and Matt and they both told me your story. And because I was on a path to go do some stupid, I was gonna go buy everything, right? Blah blah blah. Um, and so because of your story, and I know that it might be painful, but you had, you know, went a little nuts there and bought a bunch of properties and everything went to shit, you know. And so I was like, oh, I better not do that, right? So luckily you're your your issues or your things that happen help me avoid my issues and so like when dion and zuber and all these guys come out and tell you all this stuff man it it saves and then who who knows how many people are listening that aren't here or anything like that 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 saved them from making these big mistakes too so but at some point you know they're gonna you know probably retire or whatever so the young like ricky you know 10 years from now i'm hope you're sharing your journey man like hey i did this stuff and these old codgers were telling me this stuff you know and i i learned not to do this you know oh, that yeah. kind of thing you know hopefully I'm we pass it down you know i'm already recording it on uh tiktok and instagram so nice i haven't even got the uh, closing yet so i'm going to be going through all the pain the suffering and the suck and the good times what is it pay it forward right but pay yeah. it forward with knowledge right i think that's fantastic I, I can tell you right now i wouldn't be here or anywhere near here i'd probably be Probably Mark probably shaved four or five years of pain off my life. So thanks, Mark. And, and my family's life, I should say, not mom, but my family and everything, right? So that's a, it's a huge impact community. You know, anything that I donate to or charities, everybody benefits from that one little piece of information that, that Mark put out and that we're all doing. So thanks, Brandon, for doing that. That's awesome, man. I watched yours actually this morning, Jared. Your uh, there was two you did. Gosh, it was the one where you were going through your numbers, and you were talking about some people moved out. You were go you were going in detail. Mm -hmm. I was watching yours long for. I watched the entire video and just. So you're the one. <laughs> yeah, I'm the one. <laughs> And I did. And I watched it this morning and, and I watched a second one. I'm drawing a blank right at the minute at the moment. But, you know, all of us are trying to give back what D, what you're saying, what Dion, um, Matt, uh, Mike, uh, you know, all these others. We're trying to create the same momentum, but also teaching it. It solidifies it more in ourselves. So, Ricky, you, too. As you're you're getting out there sharing what your story now, where you're at, the more you begin to explain it, the more it solidifies in your own heart, and you know it that much better. Yeah, I, I liken it to the when I was a kid, there was this thing called barrel of monkeys. I think I posted it in school once, but you know, there's like one hand like this and another one like this, and so you know one hand's going up getting pulled up and the other hand's pulling somebody else up it's kind of the the same thing you know as we learn we all like inchworm up you know and as what's so i had a an investor friend of mine he passed away last year don don holmes and uh he was he was set he didn't need to help anybody but he helped me out a lot in the private money space and all that i know we don't do that here but it's a good dude 
but I think it was from the Bible and I'm not a religious guy. So I don't know you, you guys that go to church and know the Bible. He said the a rising tide raises all ships or all boats or something like that. And I thought that was pretty fitting. And so, and I used to be a couple years, I, I owe something to the real estate investing world that has nothing to do with money or anything. It's, and it's, it's mindset, but not what you think. I used to be the most pessimistic person on the planet, right? Everything was a scam. Everybody, it's, it's a zero sum game where somebody wins, I lose that kind of thing. And then real estate is interesting because it everybody can win and that it blew my mind and then i and i actually owe pace morby this i forgot to tell well actually i kind of did tell him this the other day but i thought that dude was a scam like when i read the book tax-free wealth i was like oh wow real estate that's the way and i google real estate of course pace is everywhere so i looked at this thing and i thought this is such bs you know i thought there's no way this and also i could have had this house paid off by now because i thought the same thing with um Oh, crap. What's the guy's name? Uh, there's a guy that did a book and it's uh, how to pay your house off in five years. I'm like, ah, that's crap. And it was velocity banking. Guess what? I'm now doing velocity banking. So I, I remember I said in a few videos ago, I had to learn to get out of my own way. I could be pessimistic, you know? but this community in real estate, everybody can win. And that concept to me is somewhat foreign. And I know team events, right? But there's usually a team that wins and another team loses. There's always, always like a give and take but in this real estate world everybody can win and you know i've seen it happen and i'm like oh my god it's just it's just blowing my mind you know so anyway it's funny enough that you mentioned pace how um he thought it was a scam at first i thought so too and i was on youtube and a lot of doomers would just coin at pace and be like oh there's this person who talked about how pace scammed them and everything and he lost like everything under the sun and then next thing you know, it's like I just started going to the more positive side of real estate. And they're like, oh, Pace is a really good guy. Um, all Everything he does actually works. Um, and then someone else actually explained subject two is actually more advanced uh, method in real estate that some people probably shouldn't start at the very beginning. Some people can, but most people shouldn't start with subject two at the very beginning. So it, it's just amazing how what you watch can determine your energy, your mindset, because if you go to doomers, you'll start thinking very negative thoughts. But when you start going to the actual, the, to the people that's actually doing the work, complete mind shift. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of hate on, on pace. I'm, I don't want to make this the pace show, but there's so much <laughs> hate out there and there's stuff that says that pace makes $50 million a year off of, or whatever, off the sub two behind this. He doesn't care. He doesn't fight. He doesn't give a, sh give a crap. But behind the scenes, he doesn't do anything with that. It's not even his company. He owns sub2.com. But behind the scenes, it's another company that takes all the money. He doesn't take a dime from it. But he, he earns because people that are in that community bring deals to him. So he's working that side of it. And he doesn't, the funniest thing ever is he goes, I don't want to be a trainer, right? He said this just yesterday. I don't want to be, but he's really, really good at it. But he goes, I don't want to be a trainer. Do you want to learn from somebody who's doing something? Or do you want to learn from something that's a trainer? You know, so that's why he pushes that aside. But yet, He's really good at it. <laughs> so, and I, I've, I've seen it behind the scenes. He's, I mean, Zuber's a giver, Dion's a giver, everybody's a go-giver, but this dude, yes, he's making, again, everybody can win. He's making a lot of money off this, but he is giving, this guy's poor. He put the studio in his house, man, like with his kids and the family. He's got people coming in and out of his house all the time. And I mean, that dude is given 110% granted he's making money on the back end when people bring in things but still people are rising up because of this dude and he's just giving like all the time it's a super go-giver you know and he's getting all this hate man it's crazy how much hate this guy gets i think of all the things in and zuber talks about this too of just completely eliminating doomers from videos that you watch and that some people justify it, say, I want to listen to at least one. And he says, do not do it. It, it, it messes with your brain. And I thought of a, an, an acronym. Have any of y'all heard point far or P T F A R anybody? No. Uh -uh. So it starts with it's programming your programming, which is watching those videos or which videos are you watching and which Things are you listening to or reading to? It's your programming. That's changing your programming. Your programming affects your thinking. Your thinking affects how you feel. 
your feelings, your feelings affect your actions and your actions affect your results. So if we're going to back into it, we need to make sure that we're, we're working on our programming. Programming works everything out all the way down to your results. We've got to make sure that our brains are being programmed correctly. And I agree with him. Eliminate the doomers. My mother is listening to some things, and I'm not going to tell what she is. She's listening to things that are doomers on the political views. It is ruining her, and I'm trying to help give her guidance, and it's a struggle because all she's doing is listening to that programming, and it's blinding her to reality. And so, I, you know, we all can be susceptible to this if we're getting programmed wrong. There's my little sermon for the day. Yeah. Actually, funny enough, uh, I was talking to my dad, went to go see my dad yesterday, and he was, we actually talked about the real estate deal I was doing. And he was like, son, um, given his wisdom, even though he never had rentals, everything, you know, he had parents that want to give wisdom, but the they can't give you the best wisdom because they didn't do it. And he was like really worried about me buying this rental property. And I was like, dad, everything is good. And then he also started talking about politics of it. And I said, dad, it doesn't matter who's in office. It don't. Because I can make both, I can make money on both ends. As I already mentioned multiple times, I am a party officer at the district level. And I even tell people, it doesn't matter who wins, you can still make money. It just does not matter. The question of the day is, depending on who has the policies, are you part of the investing class or the working class? Because if you're part of the working class, the policies will affect you and you have no stopgap to protect yourself. If you're part of the investing class, you have a stopgap stop gap to protect yourself. That That's the more important things about it. It's just, what are you doing to protect yourself from future policies? And you just got a plan from there. So it looks like Karen has a comment here in the questions. You have a question about a potential tenant. Yeah, hi. I'm not going to turn on my camera because I, uh, I'm i still in jammies, guys. Good for you. <laughs> but, um, I, oops, sorry. I've had a hard time finding a decent tenant simply because everybody's credit scores are so low. So I've got a kid, a kid being, I don't know, he's probably in his mid twenties. Um, that's interested in renting my property and he seems fine. Um, he's an independent tattoo artist. I can verify where he actually works because it shows pictures of him doing the work on the website along with the other tattoos people. And it shows how much his, his daily rate is. Um, so Based on that, he can afford this rental, definitely. And the credit score came back at, in in the 800s. So fabulous. Now, the, it said potential fraud because the address didn't match. But when I, I, in fact, I was just playing around with it. And I think the address was his mother's address that he used. The only other thing is I... I sent a request to the apartment complex that he's currently living in. They have not sent me anything back. So I'm a little concerned about that. And he put his grandfather down as his reference. And I've asked him twice now to please send me a real reference. And he hasn't done it. So I don't know if I should just go with it because the credit scores at 800 or I don't know. Is it so... I don't know if this relates, but I have my kids, my uh, son, who's 10, uh, will have a credit score when he's 18, and my daughters will too, because I put them on my credit. Mm -hmm. Given that he has a reference of the grandfather and the, the other family member, is this his credit, or is it maybe he's coming out of the gate and he's riding this 800 because he's brand new and that credit is his family member's credit? You know, I, I don't know. So he just has to put in... He fills it out and I'm running it through Hemlane, Hemlane. And so it came back through Hemlane. And um, 
So the only thing they said was potential fraud because the address was wrong. But the address, I again, I looked it up as it's his mother's address. His mom's also still on his bank statement. I did ask him about that, but he said that she helped him open it when he was younger and he just never removed her. But all the PayPal money coming in, which is how he gets paid. That's all to him, and it has his name specifically written right next to it. Anybody have advice? I'm not the best for this. <laughs> Can you get a copy of his credit report from Henley? Lane? Yeah, I mean, he has. In fact, let me pull it back up. I I think I, I might. Mean, if you can look at that, like specifically the history and the accounts, like. So he, let me pull it up. Um see you i mean maybe you could do like you know a, what's your concern you want to deposit in a half um do you well what? i'm in california so you can only do so much i mean so his credit score is an 809 which is amazing for a kid his age and okay. it says um what's his what's his line of credits or like trade well line? one is a joint so i'm sure that's with his mother right and then Bank of America, that's an individual that was fine. Um, everything, his credit limit's 6,500. It, everything's checked out. Um, and how long does it say like the age of the account? Like to, to. From like 17 months. So, I mean, and then he has another one, 16 months. Um, another one about 48 months. Well, he's an, forget that one. He's an authorized user on that. So that's from his mom. So clearly, um, you know, mom put him on there so that he could get a good credit score. Right. Um, student loan. It's, he's had that for, um, well, about two years, but, um, he, it looks like it was paid off actually. So. And then it has the apartment complex on here, but it only has him on here from December, November, December, and January. So for three months. So that's why I'm like, is he even actually living there? I mean, because you would think that would be longer. Well, why do, why do you think you, you're just not getting the renter, like a renter pool to choose from? What's going on with that? I live in the mountains in a, you know, dinky little town and people don't want to pay to go drive down to the sack. You know, and I'm getting a lot of sob stories too, but I'm, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. And the credit score honestly was 650. The other thing is the people who don't fill out the basic application, I send back a thing asking them to, to please let me know if they meet the minimum qualifications, 650 and close to three times the rent, but they don't answer. So I won't show it to them if they don't answer. Cause I'm like, if you can't answer a basic question, I I'm not interested in just going over there and showing the property. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. So I I'll be honest, part of me just wants to go with it because even though his mother's clearly kind of helped him get a decent credit score, I, I mean, I do know where he works and I know that, he, you know, his daily rates, $1,500 a day and the rent's 2,200. 1,500 a day for a tattoo. Well, yeah. I, I, you, I wouldn't put it, I know a guy who. A it, guy, but there's, but yeah. then there's a dime a dozen tattoo artists. I mean, yeah. you know, and that's like, you have a, you have a customer every single day. Yeah. Or you get the one once a month, and that's my right. daily rate for the month. And can now you, do, you can't pay rent. Do, I don't know, but the like, leasing, can you do co-leasing or co-signer with the mom? Since the mom's helped him out this far, if you're worried about it, can you do that? Or I don't know. Maybe. You know, I could do that. I could tell him that, hey, mom's going to have to sign this because um, you're not you're not getting back to me. But when I go to his work, I mean, I, I it seems like it's a, He's one of the more expensive artists too, because one is like runs $800 for a half day. One does $800 for a full day and he's at 1500. 
But there's another guy who is, says he's 4,000 for a full day. So I'm like, wow. So I do think he is... I mean, I, I do think he's working. It shows pictures of him working online. Do you, uh, what have you done to verify his income? Maybe I missed that. Yeah, that's a good one. Well, that's just it. So he sent me bank account statements because he doesn't get months? A, he only, so I'm going to ask him to send again because he really only sent the one month. Yeah, and no, I'm like, mm. no. I would say you're going to want, <laughs> at least three ideally if you could get four months if he he should have tax returns too i would be looking at tax returns yes. or a good series of months of of his bank statement and if he will not provide that that's the deal killer if he will and you can verify consistent revenue mm -hmm. you've got something there that i think could potentially be an okay runner. But one month is not something you can extrapolate. When we were at the bank. No, because you'd have one good month. And that's this is my statement. Sorry. Yeah, that's we yeah. we ideally at very minimum when we were doing any I was in commercial lending, we wanted a minimum three month, three years tax returns. But we on the, the the more loans or the bigger the loan, we would ask for five years worth of tax returns. So I'm thinking the same principle with uh, bank statements because mm -hmm. he's a you're saying like a 1099 almost. Yeah, yeah. So you, you're trying to get ideally th minimum three, but it could be you say I ask for six or or four or five mm -hmm. multiple months of of a bank statement so that you can prove out the revenue coming in. Okay. All right. If everything else checks out, I think you've got something there because the, the credit score, I know it's, it's not too long, but it's still establishing those individual accounts are showing some form of ability and the consistency in paying. Mm -hmm. Yes. He may have a joint account with, you're, you're saying with his mother, but the other individual ones are there and they're showing that they're paying on time. Now it's down to verifying the apartment complex. And I'll tell you, a lot of apartment complexes don't return calls. You're going to have to proactively talk to those apartment complexes and see if they'll at least talk to you on the phone. They might not put anything in writing. Mm -hmm. It just depends on the person you get on the phone. But yeah. if you get somebody on the phone to give some information that they are not good. We've seen that consistently. Apartment complexes especially are not good with getting back to you, good or bad. They're just not good at getting back to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, because when I called, they're like, oh, you need to send it here. So I did. And they're still, notoriously you know, bad. They're no very rarely do, do we get them. stuff back from them. Yeah. Um, you know, I was thinking, Karen, too, uh, there's... um. Is it Joseph Asamoa? I believe he does. He's like known for Section Eight, and I think he's out of Baltimore. And certainly, this is disclosed before you know. I think you know before people apply, but he's like, we will go to your current, we will visit your current um, living situation. He literally will go and and visit their 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 apartment and or what and make sure that they are you know, keep here's, it here's a way I do it in interviews because I, I hire a lot of people. It's the same principle. One of the questions or one of the statements I say is when I talk to your current supervisor, what do you think I'm going to hear? Now that's think of that question. statement when you, when I say it that way, and that's the truth. When I talk to them, what do you think I'm going to, they're going to say about you? Mm -hmm. That lets them know, oh crap, he's gonna talk to them. I better tell them what I think I'm gonna. They're gonna say, yeah, not okay. it's gonna lie. So what you're saying, Karen, you're maybe if if you get her get him back on the phone, say when I talk to your current place where you're staying at this apartment, what do you think I'm gonna hear? Okay, same principle. They will confess. <laughs> Because you're saying it in that definitive way, uh huh. Or, or tell you, hey, they're you're, they're going to say great things about me because I'm a great tenant or I'm a great employee yeah. or whatever. So, 
Yeah. I mean, they're, they're usually going to confess whatever's the truth, most likely, because they think the way you're saying that, that you're going to find out. Okay. Good or bad. Good or bad. No, and I was just, say. oh, I was going to say, I just looked, I went back and looked at his, um, his bank statement. It's from the end of June, July. So he ought to be sending something up, more updated. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, that's <laughs> I'm like oh no he's I'm sorry he sent July and August oh okay yeah so, September, yeah yeah he'd have September's by now yeah he? and I mean he has tons of Venmos on there um to him so I mean I would still get at least see, four I would you, still get four months okay and did you say he wasn't getting back to you or it was just the apart the landlord's the, the apartment complex? Oh, oh, okay, okay. The only thing he hasn't gotten back to me is I asked him for another um he needed to send me another rent another reference because he put his grandfather down and I'm like, No, I need another reference. Like what kind of reference? Like a landlord reference or a a uh it you well, know maybe it just says, us, maybe we it just says a personal reference is yeah. what hemline has I see. so i kind of wish they had a another reference the i don't know talk to, talk to hemline about like just or i don't know just get there <sighs> yeah they said they pretty much just go by you know credit score and um then it's kind of up to us to decide what we want to do I don't like that. So there's there no like background like credit like back a background background check. No, because I thought that they when I signed up with them, I thought they did the background check. They don't. They just put it on there, and then we do the background check. I mean, I mean, see to me, this is like a, this is that nervous. I'm not sure if I can sleep kind of situation. But I, you know, you hate to do somebody wrong who's like who's totally legit and. <clears throat> But at the same time, it's like there's some there's some questions, right? There's some holes in in this. Uh, but it, maybe it's not his fault. It's what's been asked of him and what's been presented to him. And maybe maybe you need to more, get more solid and go. Okay, how do what what do I need to check it? You know, how do I qualify a tenant? Maybe you need to do a little more research on that. And um, I, I, I maybe I think maybe you need to do have. And that's why you asked the question. Well, yeah, I because... think the way you can phrase it to him is, you know, I, I'm still not certain. I don't have quite enough information to make a decision. Here's the, the information I'd like to have so that I can make a decision. You're not saying one way or the other. You're just saying I don't have enough information to make a decision. Right. Yeah, because yeah. I I'm I think I'm going to tell him, hey, I'm going to need some more back, more statements and the on your credit report it's saying you only lived in those apartment complexes for three months and they are not returning any phone calls or emails for that that point but i mean clearly he you know where else was he living before i mean I so he he just moved here from south carolina and um because he was working at a shop there but on his application it said they went out of business and i did call the number and the number is not in business anymore um and it so previously i mean there he gave me an address of where he was living but it looks like maybe he was just renting from them and then the current address he just has that's listed as his mother even though he's living here those bank statements they're from the new location where you're at let me go back and look, take a look at those real quick because in that world you know you have to build up clientele and if you're in a small town like if you're in south carolina and you get all or wherever he was at and you had all this clientele and business great and then you move here you said he just moved here so i'm not sure how long that is so it's hard to tell because everything is venmoed in or paypal'd in yeah so you're not going to have the same People aren't going to fly. Where are you at? California, I think. California. But if the statements from a bank in, what did you say, South Carolina? 
I think so. It's from Bank of America. Let me let me uh, go. Okay. Let me look at the documents again. That's a good one, Jared. Thinking of that, I had, that didn't cross my mind. Well, service is that, industry, like my mom. Yeah, was you're dead on right. Yeah, my mom was a hairdresser, and you have to build up clientele. It's a local build up, and if you're a small town, then that's gonna be rough, man. For especially something like a tattoo artist. I mean, that. Well, he's working a little bit down below. But okay, so it doesn't even say the address on here. It just has his name, has his mom's name on it. It has deposits and and withdrawals on here. Um, is he? Does he want to help? Or, he has or a dog. Advanced safe safe balance banking. Let me see what this other one is. The, here's Bank of America. So, okay, it is Bank of America. So, yeah. So I'm not sure when he moved here, but I mean, well, he he must have he moved he moved, must have moved a while ago because this stuff is from. July and August, and he did withdrawals and um, deposits. Is it from that business, though? How do you know it's from? I don't. So he's an independent. That's the problem. He's a, I think it's like renting a booth kind of thing. The business doesn't pay him. They get, he gets paid via Venmo or um, PayPal. Yeah, independent contractor, like. Yes, I'm okay so the the place that he works though is a tattoo parlor and he rents out a spot there yes okay that's a little better right you're not trying to build up business uh because that way people know that there's a tattoo shop there yeah that's interesting Yeah, I, I just don't know. Well, I think Brandon had a great point. You don't know because you don't have the information that, so there's that, you know, maybe that list of questions and what what's what's the information that's missing that you need to know to, you know, move forward, so. Okay. Is your lease uh, annual, month to month, six months? What is the lease? So usually I do a year, but I'm thinking with him, I would do six months. And the, I could do month to month. That would, I could do that too. I'd rather do six months, but um, provided he pays. But my concern is I live in an area where it snows. He's moving up here from the valley, supposedly. Um, so he's he basically from Folsom or Sac up to the mountains and it's like, which is fine. You know, I prefer to live up here, but he, he drives a Ford uh, Mustang and I'm like, you, you do realize it snows here, right? And he's like, no, no, it'll be fine. I'm just like, okay. I mean, so I didn't want to put him on a year lease because really the best time to rent here is spring summer when people are moving and coming in november is not a good time to be renting out anything here because it's cold kids have already started school and once it starts snowing nobody's moving and what if he's not driving down that the mountain to go meet his client and then he's not getting paid and then you're getting i mean i don't get it i, I know i'm not supposed to get into all this analysis of their business but this is see my mind goes where no that's that's where that, my mind like, my mind is like, too. that's why it, i was like okay well i'm gonna put I think you want a w2 you know and you're right it, it's kind of maybe not and not a fit for the location and the where the all the w2s are but jobs are i'm wondering if it's a you know it's a price thing that could attract more people bottom line yeah so i don't know that's a tough one yeah I, I agree with brandon uh even though i don't do that i don't know how they interact with uh that type of thing because i'm doing a different strategy but uh i agree with brandon just be open and honest say hey look i don't have enough information here you know to make a decision so 
Yeah. You did. You said you did bring that up to him. That's kind of cool about, hey, you know, you have a Mustang and it snows here. Uh, well, yeah, because I don't, I mean, I don't want somebody to move in and then be like, oh, I, I didn't realize we got this much snow. I want to move out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. I mean, that, that exactly. And is there any, any, any maintenance, anything that would need, he would need to take care of on the home? Like, you know, okay, it's snowing, but he's going to have to be able to handle a X, Y, Z, a handle of this and use some common sense to do this. It's like, and you know, what can you do? He's got this car. It's like, this is what I got, but, but you're right. It's almost like, you know, why don't you try a year season, drive up a few times in the snow and then tell me how it works for you. Because I don't think, does it snow in South Carolina? I don't know. I don't think so, but I really don't know. No, I'm just like, mm, you have no idea. So sorry, Karen, what city are you in or what town? I live in Pollock Pines. Oh yeah. No, that's not. <laughs> so I, I'm exactly like, I, yeah, I get snow. Um, I'm exactly halfway to downtown Sacramento and halfway to South Lake Tahoe. But yeah, I get snow. This is just not sounding like a strong candidate, to be honest. I know, but everybody else's scores are even worse. And I'm like, I don't want to go with somebody that, you know... Isn't there somebody that talks about like they don't even look at like scores, they look at income? Well, um, Dion looks Dion. at their scores and he, he goes with anybody above, I think he said a 700 and he doesn't care about the income. Oh, he doesn't care about the income. He just care. Okay. I thought I heard something the other way, but. Um... And I mean, I, I get his mom putting him on her stuff. I did that with my kids. So. What's you know, your some people aren't going to dig deep. That's why. Yeah. Do you have any kind of sense of uh, have you met him in person? Yeah. Uh huh. What's your gut tell you? I thought he was fine. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, he. I mean, it. I didn't. Yeah, so the the only thing is like he here's the couple things that came up. So um TransUnion said that they estimate his income may be five thousand dollars or more lower than what he reported, and that he uh his household income may be two times the annual rent. But when I look at the Venmos and stuff that he's getting, um submitted to him i mean it looks it it looks decent so those right. are the venmos that are submitted to him but you don't know what the booth costs his rent his lease up at work is right i don't know no and those that's venmos. really and that's only for one month that's during the summer when people are like you know feeling good and showing off their body and they're like you know throw me a new tattoo i want to i'm wearing t-shirts and da, da da i don't think dead winter under sweaters and big old jackets people are going to be like give me a new tattoo. I'm just, I, I don't know. It, it seems there's, yeah, you have, you have some more, he, he's got to provide a little bit more evidence. Yeah. Cause he ability. wants to move here pretty soon. His, his place is up at the end of the month and I need to get somebody in there. Um, otherwise it'll be spring. I'll be sitting on this place till spring. And I, I don't want to do that either. How much is an eviction and how much do you want to enjoy that? Well, I don't know. I'm just guessing, you know, I'm just wondering, I'm, you know, you got to throw out that. Yeah. That what I mean, if, you know, so, so this was a complete remodel and it was supposed to have been done a couple of months ago and then it's just snowballed. So, I mean, I just want, I want to be done with this, to be honest, I'm tired and as I don't know. The problem is everybody else, they either don't respond or, you know, I was sitting there the other a couple weeks ago, no, I guess last week waiting for somebody, you know, don't hear from them. I, I don't know, yeah. but I'm not, I won't rent to somebody that 
really I'm looking for a 700 credit score. Well, you got your checklist. You're above the 700 and you got some feedback from Brandon and Gina. It sounds like you've got maybe a little work to do and go check off some more boxes. Yeah. there He did rent from somebody called, uh, it's called self rent. And it was 2300. Has anybody ever heard of that? Hmm. I, I was going to look it up, but um, anyways, he paid them consistently, so. Interesting. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's a tough one. Something I'm going to learn here someday. <clears throat> Stick to your guns, I think that's. I mean, don't jump out the frying pan into the fire. That would be my my concern of course and i i will definitely be air on the side of nervous nelly and oh, caution and my husband drives and him crazy because i'm constantly like well what about this what about this what you know in other things that he's doing but and I'll, I'll be honest i mean i have a i mean i have another rental and i've rented to kids that had you around the 650 credit score before you know they're always young kids and um which is fine. And, you know, I've been a little iffy before and I've gone ahead and, and done it and it's always worked out. I've never really had a significant issue. Um, everybody's always paid their rent on time. And the one time, which was right after COVID started, people were having a hard time and they just asked, straight up asked if they could break their rent because they were both laid off. And I said, yes. Um, but so I, I don't know. All righty. Well, yeah, we've got some uh, hard thinking to do and some questions to ask. And yeah, I appreciate you guys, uh, your input though, significantly. So I will be asking him a few more questions here. Okay. All right. You'll probably get comfortable either way. So, yeah. All right. Thank you guys. Uh, Ricky sent a message, but he, I think he meant it to the group, but he accidentally sent it to me. He says, I have to head out. Thanks, everybody. Have a nice day. Yeah. So, um, myself, too. So you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, too. OK. OK, Gina. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Jared. All right. We, we are we are two hours in. Is there anything else anybody wanted to bring up or do we want to go ahead and call it? I, I want to say a quick update. I think a couple of weeks ago, I talked about the refinancing stuff mm -hmm. for the project that I'm working on. And the appraisal came in very low. And then I ordered another appraisal, you know, put on the doors that I, you know, didn't put. So, you know, the three bedroom become a four bedroom for appraisal. And thankfully, the appraisal went up by more than 100K. Nice, man. So I, I'm i able your, to... Did it go over your... Yeah, yeah, that, that actually overshoot you know, my original expectations. So I think, you know, that was a, a, a pretty, uh, you know, good discussion last time when, when I was talking about that. I think, you know, you, Jared, and also Brandon, you guys, you know, gave me a lot of inputs about that. Thanks for that. And, and I did order the second appraisal and I'm so glad that it, you know, came out okay this time and it go, you know, pretty smoothly for the, for the second one. Nice. And, and now That's I can move forward yeah with with the uh long-term financing and move forward with the project so i you know want to mention that since you know we we had you know that discussion the other the other day thanks you guys that's awesome man i didn't have the luck you did but i got the needle moved closer close enough where i could close the deal it was fine by <laughs> me a couple thousand or whatever it was so at least you went over that's awesome man yeah, yeah, I, I got I got lucky, I, I guess. Uh, the appraiser, I also met him, and then he was, uh, you know, from the same same school, so we had a we had a pretty good conversation and stuff. I don't know, maybe it helped me. It yeah, it doesn't, that who hurt. knows? But but yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I I think I think it was great. <laughs> Did you buy him? I'm, I'm gonna. I I didn't buy him anything. I, oh, I okay. yeah, but but now I I'm gonna you know connect back with him you know building the network and and whatnot i i do want to you know 
um say thanks to him so you know i'm i'm going to do that but oh okay you know it it it, it was it was great it it was much better than than the first one the first one i you know i had this when i was of you and him out to lunch and you buying him drinks and saying hey you know what do you think that's worth <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah 100 grand no sorry <laughs> oh, that's yeah. awesome well, cool, man. That is that's that's exciting, and I'll, I'll uh, keep that in the back of my head too if I run into that again. So, yeah. All righty. Well, uh, anything else? I'm good. Awesome. Hello. Thank oh. you, guys. Thank you. All right, guys. You guys enjoy your uh, rest of your Sunday. All right. See you next week. All right. See you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.